When we build OpenCV from source, we can create a script to install it. We'll go over a few ways to do that and point out some common pitfalls and how to avoid them. This is a follow-up to the last video on how we built OpenCV with CUDA support. In the build video, when we were finished, we saved our build script and build artifacts to an external drive. The build artifacts are in the slash TMP directory. This is straightforward when using the file manager. Drag and drop the folders you want to save. It takes a minute or two. However, if you are copying the files from the command line, you need to be careful. You must preserve the timestamps. If you don't, the next attempt to build the library will compile everything from scratch. The timestamps tell the build system whether to rebuild or not. We'll delete these build artifacts. Let's copy the files using the terminal. We'll open a terminal on the external drive destination. We use the minus minus preserve option. Now, normally people build the package right after compilation, but it's worth it to go over working from a safe state. This is a fresh install on a Jetson Nano. After the initial boot, we update to the latest and greatest using apt update, upgrade, and distribution upgrade. We also add our favorite utility, JTOP. We do this by installing Python 3 pip and Jetson stats. After building OpenCV, I saved the build artifacts onto an external drive. Let's copy the build into the slash TMP directory, which is where the original built from. We can directly install our OpenCV version using make install. We change directory to the OpenCV build directory, then we sudo make install. This is the same command that is executed when the script runs for the first time. Password. We are installing this into a system area, so we need to tell it the password. We run into a couple of issues here. First, the make script is building a file. It looks like it missed one on the first to build. That should not happen. That's why I have a love-hate relationship with make. I love to hate it. It's a bad biter that bites. The second issue is that if make is going to build files, it needs to build dependencies. This is a new system, so we need to install the dependencies. Let's open up our build script. Scroll down to the install dependencies. Let's copy the dependencies and run them in the terminal. Then we make install again. Then it takes a couple of minutes to install. Let's switch back over to the home directory and take it for a test drive. Let's tell Python where the package is located. Let's take a look at the OpenCV version, 4.8.0. Everything is proceeding as I have foreseen. Let's take a look in Python. Let's scroll up a little bit. It's what we expect. After building OpenCV, I saved the build artifacts onto an external drive. Let's copy the build into the slash TMP directory, which is where the original built from. We switch over to the build directory. Let's open up our build script. Scroll down to the install dependencies. Let's copy the dependencies and run them in the terminal. Now we are ready to make our package. This will create three files. Let's go look at them in the file manager. Let's scroll down a bit. There's a shell script and two tar files. We'll copy them over to our external drive. Let's take a look around the tar file. The file contains the library and all of the support files for OpenCV. These are all in the familiar folder layout for programs. Here's the main OpenCV dynamic library. The install OpenCV script holds all of these files and a simple script to install them. One of the rites of passage of using the command line is to make this mistake. We navigate to the slash TMP directory, then we copy the build artifacts here. Then you switch over to the build directory. Then you make package. And make proceeds to start building everything from scratch.
You may say to yourself, my God, what have I done? The good news is it will be done in about seven hours. We start from a fresh install again. A make recipe consists of a set of shell commands which are used to create a target in a project. These recipes are defined within a make file. The make file guides the make utility in compiling and linking a program from its source code. Make executes the commands in a recipe and creates or updates a target like an object file or executable. The file system automatically updates the last modified timestamp of that file. The next time make runs, it checks these timestamps to determine whether the target is up to date with respect to its prerequisites, the source files, and other dependencies. If any prerequisite has a newer timestamp than the target, make will re-execute the recipe for that target. On the left, we have the package that we are trying to build. On the right, we have the original. You can see that when we copied the original, the timestamps changed. That's what triggered make to start rebuilding everything. Let's fix that. Go back to the slash TMP directory. Get rid of the bad build OpenCV directory. Now, when we do the copy, we tell it to preserve the timestamps. We better make sure that our dependencies are installed. Let's open up our build script. Scroll down to the install dependencies. Let's copy the dependencies and run them in the terminal. Then we are ready to make our package. We better make sure that they are there. There they are. On our external drive, we create an installer folder. Then we copy our installer files over there. We are ready to install OpenCV using the shell script. We are on a newly prepared system, like in the beginning of the video. Let's copy the installation script from the external drive to the home directory. Let's take a look at the properties. For this build, it's 90 megabytes. This includes the OpenCV libraries and support environment. Let's get some help for this script. We will manually set the prefix directory. I usually keep it in slash user slash local. That's a system directory, so password. We scroll down, it's the usual threats. Do you accept the license? Why yes, yes I do. Thank you sir, may I have another? The next question is a little trickier. We want to say no here. Then off it goes and extracts everything. Let's fire up Python. We import CV2. We check the version, 4.1.1, which is what we expect. That's the default install. Now we edit the bash RC file. Scroll down to the bottom. We will set the environment variable Python path to the new OpenCV installation. Save the file. Let's start up Python 3 again. Import CV2, and about 10 seconds later, segmentation fault. The most useful of all error messages. Oh wait, a notification just came in. Sorry, the application stopped unexpectedly. Thank you, but I already knew that. This is a new system install. We're missing some OpenCV dependencies. We've only had a few decades to come up with a good error message for this. Let's take a look at the OpenCV version. It can't find live CBLAS. It's time to find our dependencies. We might as well do them all at once. Fortunately, we know the location of the module. List, dynamic, dependencies. That's a little much. Let's look for ones it can't find. Live Tesseract and Live CBLAS. Now we will search for packages that contain these libraries. We'll use apt file for that. We install it. Then we update apt files database. It takes about four minutes. Let's get those names again. Let's find Tesseract. Seems Tesseracts are always missing. This takes about a minute to find. Live Tesseract 4. We do the same for CBLAS. Let's load those packages up. Now let's check the OpenCV version. 4.8.0. Let's fire up Python. Import CV2, 
Let's print out the version. In the build information, it's exactly what we expect. I love it when a plan comes together. I loaded up the face detect demo from the last video. You can see we're getting our 20 frames per second, indicating that we are receiving CUDA goodness. Thanks for watching.